¿Qué pasa, mi amigos? It's Nima here, and uh, I just want to talk about a few things that have been in the news lately. Um, before we get into that, I do want to say please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if I don't get more subscribers, YouTube says they're going to come and take my kids, and I mean, honestly, I'm okay with that, but uh, the wife, she's attached to them or something. I don't know. It's a whole thing. But, uh, you know, save my kids from YouTube hell by... um. Just hitting that subscribe button. <laughs> anyway, so the first thing I kind of want to talk about is something that was really popular last week. And uh, something I just, you know, didn't have time to talk about and don't often do these kind of fireside chats, if you will. Um, but it was on um, G4. And namely Frosk, but G4 in general and how, like, X-Play and their whole catalogs of, of shows is just not what it once was. And part of the big thing that they wanted to talk about was that kind of go woke, go broke kind of thing. And, I, and honestly, I'm not here to talk about that because uh, I think you should be able to have the ability to say whatever you want and express how you feel. Um, and some of the things they say, I agree with them. Some of them, I, I just don't really understand, but that's not important. Um, because as a really intelligent strategist once said, don't pick your battles, pick the battle locations. And that would be one thing that I would advise for someone like Frosk. Hey, maybe not ostracize your viewers there and find a different place to, to discuss uh, topics that are important to you of that nature. But I go further with this, though, because I think, like, G4 and specifically X-Play have an even bigger issue than this, like, maybe identity politics or woke leftism or whatever you want to call it that they tend to be leaning into, which I do think is a calculated risk, meaning, like, most people who are going to watch that show and be into video games are people in their, like, 20s and 30s, and those people are, tend to be more left-leaning as well as, I'm sure some of the creators, uh, some of the hosts, I should say, actually have these opinions. Uh, you know, one thing that is talked about a lot on there is, like, representation. And um, me being a person who, like, that's actually the last thing I want in a game. I, I can't imagine, like, if they made a video game that represented me... I wouldn't play it. It would be horrible. A guy would get hit in the nose. There'd be like blood and you'd be like, oh, time out, time out. Ah, oh, guys, I'm bleeding. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wake up every day, look in the mirror and I'm like, ugh, really? This is what you're bringing? This is it? Yeah, I don't want to see me in a game, but I understand <laughs> where, you know, uh, like people, you know, uh, People from different walks of life, black, brown, Asian, whatever, might want to see more characters that look like them that they can portray. Uh, so, you know, some of this stuff I don't really, I find interesting. Um, I find, I found it interesting that like the black Hukage did like a whole thing about hair. I never even thought about hair. I don't really care. I'm just annoyed if they don't have a mohawk and then whatever, I'm fine with it. But, I digress. My bigger issue, and I think the bigger issue going on with G4 and X-Play in general, is there is some sort of um, ostracizing that they do, and maybe it's not so much on a political level as much as it is like a form of gatekeeping and this like cool kids mentality. Now, see, this really first kind of piqued my interest when they were talking about The Legend of Zelda, which, as you guys probably know, is my favorite game series of all time, especially at least from Nintendo. And uh, they all immediately were there quickly to, to talk about how bad Breath of the Wild was. Like, oh, no, we don't like Breath of the Wild. In fact, I believe it was Frosk herself who had said, <laughs> Ocarina of Time on N64 is the only way to play it and the best Zelda game. Well, okay, look, I understand where, like, people might have that opinion, and you can have that opinion, and that's fine, but then to turn around and basically say anyone who likes Breath of the Wild or considers it one of the best games is basic, and, oh, they're not true Legend of Zelda fans. They didn't actually say that word for word, but you did get that impression during this, like, banter between all of the hosts that, uh, well, obviously we don't play any of the new Zelda games. That's a, that's for, for simps and for basic people and whatever. Uh, but, like, that's a problem. And looking in that, like, whole line of their thinking, 
Nintendo itself has been like ostracized from their show. If you've noticed, they barely cover Nintendo. They really have not much to do with it and don't really care about it. Um, in fact, um, they even have a lot of pretty nasty things to say about Sony and the PlayStation. It seems like they really just either back like, well, what I, what I would consider not even retro games, but like the mid 2000s games and Xbox. And that's like, that's fine if you want to be like, you know, if you want X play to stand for Xbox play and, and just be, you know, that version of like PlayStation access, but on the, the Microsoft side of things, that's cool and fine with it. And I, I don't know. I just, I, I find that interesting to think that like, okay, they're already kind of politically breaking down their audience. Now they're going to do it in the biggest way possible. Because let's be honest, like a lot of people that probably watch that show, they might have some political underlining about themselves, but not really care. And it's not like their identity, but their identity is video games. So then you take the Nintendo Switch, which is the best-selling console of 2021, and a console that's just massively on the rise and has a ton of games and credibility to it. And you go and you crap on it, or you barely cover it. In fact, I think one of the only reviews they did was Metroid, in which Adam Sessler said, like, it's he doesn't get it, he doesn't like it, it, it sucks, basically. Of course, you would never say that about, like, the original Metroid, because, you know, gatekeeping. But, and I just find that with all of it. Pokemon Arceus, or Arceus, whatever it is, um, they barely have talked about that. That game sold like 6.5 million copies in like what like what eight days something like that i i might be wrong someone will fix that but, but they didn't really talk about it in fact no they did uh most recently i think they did a review on dying light 2 and then they went further and around that time they had a video for reviewing apex legends three years later and five nights at freddy's but arguably the biggest game that was out at that moment, and it was kind of dry in 2022. I know we're still early in the year, but let's, let's be honest, Pokemon Arceus was like the biggest game of 2022 so far, and they didn't even review it. <laughs> in fact, they had one video, uh, 15 fucked up facts about Pokemon, and, that, and that's like the only one I can really find. Instead, they're doing reviews of Death Stranding and Mass Effect Andromeda and Dark Souls 3, like, why I, I get why you might want to do older reviews because you, we've missed time while they're away and Adam Sessler look for all of his downfall he is somewhat of a hero to me and I know a lot of people are probably angry about that but no I don't care about him as a person but his writing style and his ability to review games is, is incredibly impressive and anyone who looks at his vocabulary and the I don't know, the the writing, just his ability to write, okay? Yeah, it, it's amazing. Um, but, <laughs> but, he does in fact think that uh, we care about what he thinks about games that came out about a decade ago. And, you know, I, I guess I get that for Time Filler, but really? You're not going to review Pokemon Arceus? Arceus. I, I, I don't know. It just, I think, like, they purposely uh, just kind of disparage Nintendo. And, like, look, that's fine. And I understand, like, a lot of people probably feel that I do that. And some other people do that because we don't review games from Xbox and, and PlayStation as much. And you know what? Like, people like me and Trotty, who somehow put out reviews every week, and especially on new games and games people haven't heard of, even though, I don't know, G4 has, like, a whole crew they could be doing it, but they don't. And they just do old games. Whatever. Um... <laughs> We also, though, are at a disadvantage because, um, like, I would love to do a review of Pokemon Arceus. I haven't. I would love to do a review of Horizon Forbidden West. But you know why I probably won't? Because no one's going to watch my video. Uh, I do a lot of indie games because a lot of people don't cover them. And I enjoy a lot of them. So I think, like, that's a good place for me to go. But if you're going to look for the review on Pokemon Arceus or, uh, you know, for Horizon Forbidden West or, or whatever, you're not going to go to me. Like, you're going to go to one of the bigger guys who does a lot of that work. Um, You know, so we are at a, a, that kind of disadvantage. And with a lot of, like, PlayStation 5 games and Xbox Series games, 
almost anything that releases for them is going to be what I would consider for the bigger fish and not really for us. I understand there are some indies and some other games that we could be digging in deeper into, but you know, it's just a little bit more convenient, at least for me. I don't know about Trotty, um, but to do the Nintendo Switch. But I have love for all the consoles, and I really do enjoy playing all of them. I, my son has an Xbox Series. I have a PS5. I have the Switch, of course. So yeah, like, I'm not operating from a bias. In fact, I would love to be able to do some of those other games, but I gotta get to a point where I can actually get subscribers and views and, and be like one of the, the bigger guys and, 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 you know, people actually pay attention to me. But if I, if I do those games, no one's gonna care. But, um, anyway, I did a couple other things I want to talk about. Um, number one, a lot of people have said, 2022 is the like JRPG year. Like, ah, uh, the JRPG fans are feasting 2022. But you know, and I, you know, I, I'm not going to have like a whole lot to back this up. Um, but I am curious with some of my JRPG fans, what you guys think. I was kind of thinking like 2021 might have been like one of the best JRPG years we've had in like decades, if not maybe like ever. Like when you really think about it. I mean, there were so many great JRPGs that came out in 2021. Like, um, I mean, for one, Shin Megami Tensei V, like, that was not only long-awaited, but also an amazing game. You had Neo the World Ends With You. You had Tales, um, Tales of Vespera, uh, Scarlet something, Scarlet Nexus, <laughs> that was the name of the game, uh, Monster Hunter Stories, and, like, these are just some of them. Like, somebody, like, they're again, like, Trotty could, he could, like probably rail off a whole ton of games <laughs> that I'm not even thinking about. Uh, but I don't know. I'm just kind of curious, like what your guys thoughts are. Like, do you think 2021 was the more superior year of releases? And I know 2022, we haven't even gotten like every detail yet on all the games, but we, we kind of have an idea what the forecast is. Um, or I'm kind of curious too, what you think is the best year. And I understand like there is some, really heavy hitting years like especially in like that late 90s era like early 2000s maybe but definitely like late 90s there was some really like just huge games that came out that jrpgs and they kind of like were the cornerstones for what we have now and it is really difficult too because as i have been playing a lot of like indie games and uh stuff like that and games are like people don't really pay attention to that much or eh, they should. Um, but there's a ton of great JRPGs that people have never even heard of and they're done by all these great indie companies. Um, but yeah, so I'm just kind of curious what you guys think about that. Um, and finally, wanted to talk about the countdown clock on Capcom's website. So apparently in six days, um, I think at the taping, uh, the taping of this is six days. Um, Capcom will have a big reveal, and the lettering and the numbering and everything seems to be the Resident Evil lettering, and a lot of people are assuming that this is maybe going to do us like DLC, um, the biggest thing, and I think, I think it's more people want it to be this, but they're thinking the Resident Evil 4 remake will be announced, and I personally don't think that's going to be it. Um, the game is going to be so big, people are going to be so excited for it, they aren't going to need to be like... I don't know, like, drawing, like, this kind of hype for it. Um, but maybe Resident Evil Village DLC. I personally, I hope it's, uh, Revelations 3. They're gonna talk about that. That would be amazing. Um, for one, cause that's a type of game, like, I know would be fun to, like, play with you guys and, and have it up and stream it. It's also kind of scary, and, uh, I've really enjoyed that series in general. Um, and then there's other people who think it could be, could be, Street Fighter 6, which I think would also be really cool. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, different games that Capcom could go with, um, but it definitely does seem to be like that gothic, like Resident Evil style, so we'll kind of see what it turns up being. But uh, anyway, guys, that's it for the video. I appreciate you guys being here, and uh, yeah, like and subscribe, comment if you enjoy these kind of like videos. I'll probably end up doing them anyway, because I enjoy talking about video games, and I don't have the time <laughs> to do a review every, you know, every day. So I, I want to keep up at least some content for you and, and just put some, put some good out there. But uh, anyway, guys, appreciate you. Y'all have a great day.